Good evening. My name is Mary Kay Zaravlov, and with Steve Hahn this evening, we're doing Up in the Air. Tonight, we're interviewing Jim Anderson and Herb Meekins from the Guardian Angels, which is the cheerleading crew for the Houston Angels, a female professional basketball team. And we're going to start off by uh, having the two young men introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves. Herb, tell us where you came from before you started cheerleading for the Houston Angels. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I came down to Houston because I graduated from no Raleigh, North Carolina's main school, which is North Carolina State University. I was a PR major, which is a four-year degree. Uh, the reason I came down here is I figured Houston's a very good city to get a job in, and I'm 22 years old, and I'm ambitious, and I'm dying to get that good job. I'm still looking for it. Right now, I'm a personnel consultant for one of the top four firms in Houston. Okay, and Jim, where are you from? I'm from, uh, presently from Florida. I went to the University of Florida, got a four-year degree in political science. I came to Houston in 1974 to, believe it or not, go to law school. I graduated law school about six months ago, and I'm currently waiting for the bar exam about 12 days away, so wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm sure that takes a lot of time <laughs> out of your <laughs> schedule. Well, we're just going to ask some basic questions because this is so new to me, to get a press release that says we've got male cheerleaders now in Houston, and Texas, of all places, seemed that unusual to start it out. <laughs> Um, tell us about the public reaction you got, say, your first game or your first couple games. I'm much more surprised it was, uh, it was really good. When I first heard about male cheerleaders and a female basketball team, female pro basketball team, I said, well, it's definitely a, a different mixing. And after the first basketball game, we had some heavyweight and cowboy boots and the cowboy hat and the beer belly and all come up and tell us what a good job we had. And I tell you, I was, I was quite shocked, to say the least. I can imagine. That would be my surprise, too. By the way, this evening, if you've got a question to ask either Herb or Jim, you can call us at 527-4050 or 527-4098, and uh, we'll try and get your questions through to them. Okay. How many people are there on the cheerleading squad, Herb? There are eight actual squad members. In case something was to happen to one of the eight, we have four alternates. Uh, we practice once a week, and everyone is required to show up. But uh, usually I'd say eight is your best number. We've been to games. There have been seven people to where all four alternates could not make it, and only seven of the original people were able to make it. Well, you were mentioning yeah. something about there not being enough alternates, and you were saying that you're going to try and get some more in the future? This Saturday. This Saturday at Strake Jesuit School, we are having tryouts. It's Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to choose four people. Two people will be able to cheer with the original eight. Two people will be considered as alternates. Uh, we're hoping there's going to be a big show up for it. Well, what kind of uh, training do you need for this? Or what kind of training did you all have for this? I showed up four hours late. I showed up after cheerleading tryouts had ended for the Houston Angels. And I said, don't let Herb on the team. And a lot of people <laughs> said, don't let Herb That's on the right. team. And Herb wanted to stand up for his rights because I had been told by one of the Houston Angels uh, press people that if you show up by 2 o'clock, we'll let you try out. Well, tryouts ended at something like 1.30. So I showed up, and I, I don't know, just for personal reasons, I said, hey, I'm going to try out like at Lump It, someone told me. And so I got out there by myself, and I tried out, and I made it. And uh, I don't know, I really look back at it now, and it was more fun actually having to do it under the pressure. But what we're asking everyone to do for this Saturday is to come, hopefully, with like a cheer you've made up, uh, come with a little idea of your own. A lot of people put their personality into it. Uh, we're not there to try to pick out anybody that matches our pattern that we're used to. We're there looking for personality, regardless of race, color, age, or anything. That's kind of surprising because my impression of choosing cheerleaders is, is more a uh, compliment to the team to, to uh, be very attractive and if, if the game gets a little slow, you can watch the cheerleaders and enjoy yourself in that way. And it, it surprises me to hear you say that you're looking basically for personality. Obviously, you've not seen us. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, it's, it's a mixture. We go for people who have the talent. Uh, I, basically, anyone can have the talent. But the biggest thing is when people look at you out there on the floor, do they like you or dislike you? And I think the main thing is you can bring that across through your personality. You know, if you're out there getting into it or if you're out there looking like you think you're something and you're just doing it because you're in the position that you're on the court and, hey, I'm on the court, look at me, uh, they, they automatically, they're going to turn their nose at you, which, is, of course, you, de you know, you deserve. 
But uh, we're looking mainly for the personality. That's going 50% into what we choose Saturday is personality. Are all eight of you going to be choosing? Is, is that the, the idea here? That's or is there I've anybody heard, else? Yeah. Yeah. Eight That's of us we're playing and that. some outside sponsors, and I believe some other experts from somewhere. But I think the nucleus is going to be the eight, eight original cheerleaders. Okay, you told, both of you told me that you had previous cheerleading experience, right? Right. And do you think that's pretty essential? It sure doesn't hurt to uh, know how to make the basic motions and to at least appeal to a crowd, not to mention having some gymnastic abilities and the ability to do mm -hmm. double stunts with male members of the other team. Uh, definite plus toward the tryout, I'd say. That's got to be fairly unusual. I know in, in our college cheerleaders, um, the little small child, small girl, goes up on top, the five feet tall, petite girl with a cute smile, goes on the top of a pyramid. It's got to be unusual lifting a six foot guy up on your shoulders. Oh, one thing, it's a lot harder. You should hear the <laughs> vocabulary of us while he is going <laughs> up to the top. But uh, it, it makes it a lot more fun because it's a challenge for us. I've always had, you know, the little tiny girl, like you're saying, call, you know, climbing up there. And when they're wearing these little spiked shoes, and it's like you say, a six foot guy climbing up there, obviously you're feeling something you're not used to, you know, stabbing in your arms and your shoulders. <laughs> New sensations. And so we talk to each other as he goes up. So it's, it, but that makes it a lot more fun because it's a bigger challenge. The crowd doesn't expect to see the six foot person reach the top of the aisle, he'll mm -hmm. fall. So that makes you even want to make it better. What kind of relationship do y'all have with the team? Uh, uh, it, you know, it's, I've always heard, well, uh, you see how the, there's a female uh, cheerleaders, and the, the captain of the football team does that with the, yeah. the, the head cheerleader. What kind of <laughs> relationship do y'all have? <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's a bit lacking in the uh, this organization. I don't know why. I think maybe the female cheerleading, or the female, excuse me, female basketball is so new that we haven't really broken into the, their field yet. Uh, they're very social. Uh, we you know, socialize quite a bit, and they come up and shoot the bull with us, so to speak. And uh, i tell you, something that needs plugging while we're on the air is the ladies basketball team. They are number one in the league and they're very, just a composite of very talented women. And much to your surprise, if you go out and watch one of these games, you will be in for a surprise as to how good they play. They are averaging almost 100 points a game. And think about a 100 point game, the Rockets don't make that some games. And for these ladies to hustle up and down a full length court with uh, regular NBA rules is really quite a show. Where do they play? They play the last, uh, they have played two games at the Summit and the usual games are at the Astro Arena at 8 o'clock in the evening. And if you watch the Houston Post uh, sports section, the middle of the sports section, not the front page, folks, you'll <laughs> catch the, uh, the game scheduling for them. It's, it's hard to see, but uh, make a point to look into it sometime. Yeah. Going back, wait a minute, real quick. I'm sorry. That's all right. question. Uh, it's unreal, the personalities you find on that team. When I first saw them, I, say our, I would say our first two weeks knowing them, it was like they were one group, we were one group. They looked at us from 100 feet away, and every now and then they'd point and they'd smile, and we'd yeah. point back and we'd smile. But it turns out now we basically know each other. The names got across. We know each other's names. And at the end of a game, when you go up, um, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them have even dated the guys that are on the on the cheerleading squad, from what I understand. Uh, these ladies are really loaded with personality, and that's something that I never really expected to find in pro ball. Do you feel you're playing more to the crowd or that you are cheering individually these girls on? I think it's, well, at first it started out to the crowd. I cheered toward the crowd. I'd say, come on, angels, you know, hey, let's win it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and I'd look out and I'd scream at the ladies and then I'd look back up there um, at the crowd. But now we know their names. And so you're, you're more inclined to actually sit there and scream through it. Um, come on, Karen, make the shot. You know, and if Karen doesn't make the shot, then you'll... And you'll sit there and you'll gripe to Karen instead of to where you would normally <coughs> just let it fall or whatever. You, I think we're now we're a lot more emotionally involved in the game because we actually know them. Mm -hmm. And that makes us try a little bit harder. Try a little bit harder.